What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So I was told that there could be a massive card in the works, a doubleheader style card in the works for the premier boxing champion, founding advisor Al Heyman, better known as the PBC, and their new partnership and relationship and businessship with Amazon, Amazon Prime. Now, we know that Showtime had decided to get out the business of the sport of boxing after 37 years, which left Al Heyman and his stable of fighters and his brand to find a new home, which they found a new home on Amazon. But now they have a limited amount of fights they can put on per year. It's said between 12 to 14 fights. Now we know some of these dates are already somewhat occupied. You have two fights left on the deal with four division world champions, superstar boxer, Mexican fighter, who is the undisputed super middleweight world champion, Saul Canelo Alvarez, who has 60 wins, two losses, two draws, 39 big wins by way of knockout, 33 years of age, five foot eight with a 70 inch arm reach. He's gonna fight May 4th, Cinco de Mayo weekend, and he's gonna fight the second weekend in September, Mexican Independence Day weekend, which I believe this year is May 13th. So those are two dates already booked up. Then you have two dates that needs to be booked up for undefeated three division, five-time world champion, superstar boxer, who is widely acknowledged as one of the faces, if not the face of the sport of boxing in Javante Tank Davis who is 29 wins, no losses, no draw, 27 big wins by way of knockout, 29 years of age, five foot five with a 67 inch arm reach. He's gonna need two dates. It looks like he's gonna open up the introduction to this partnership in March. Then another fight date before the year is up. So that's four dates already off the board, right? Now there's some going to be pay-per-view, some going to be non-pay-per-view. So those are four dates already taken off the board. Right from the jump. Then you have the rematch between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. That's a guaranteed pay-per-view. So I just gave you five pay-per-views and five dates. Already taken off the board. Right? So that leaves a total of nine dates. Now you have another budding superstar an undefeated two-time WBC super middleweight world champion, Mexican Ecuadorian superstar boxer, David the Mexican monster Benavidez. David Benavidez is now 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 24 big wins by way of knockout, 26 years of age, six foot two with a 75 inch arm reach. So you have David Benavidez who is a budding superstar to say the least okay excuse me 28 wins no loss no draw 24 wins by way of knockout 27 years of age uh six foot two with a 75 inch arm reach he's had two mega fights he beat Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andre right back to back he needs a date and now it looks like all is going to come to fruition with a mass with a mat a massive double header style fight which will see David Benavidez face off against a guy who has been aggressively calling him out and Cuban super middleweight star title contender, David Morrell, who is 10 wins, no loss, no draw, nine wins by way of knockout. David Morrell is southpaw. He's very slick. He's six foot one. He has a 78 and a half inch arm reach. He's young. David Morrell wants this fight with David Benavidez. Now, David Morrell is not a massive draw, right? But he's a very, very high potential, skilled, talented fighter. He's not a massive draw. He fights in the Armory in Minnesota. He's only 25 years of age. The fight itself is a big fight. But again, he's just not a massive draw. Now, how do you make this a pay-per-view card? Because it's said that Amazon is not going to 
give them a budget. They're just giving them a platform in which to showcase their fights, which means that these fights are going to have to be on pay-per-view. So how do you make David Benavidez versus David Morrell a successful pay-per-view? Well, you add another major fight to it, which is said to be a possible showdown, if all comes to fruition, a fight between two division undefeated world champion, superstar boxer, who is the reigning WBC middleweight world champion, former unified junior middleweight world champion, now super middleweight title contender, Jamal Hitman Lions Only Charlo, who is 33 wins, no loss, no draw, 22 wins by way of knockout. He is 33 years of age, six foot one with a 74 inch homage. Who do you put him in the ring with? You put him in the ring with another rival of his who has a storyline now built in and it's a big fight. And that's former IBF super middleweight world champion, superstar boxer, Caleb Sweethand Plant, who is 22 wins, two losses, no draws, 13 wins by way of knockout, 31 years of age, six foot one with a 74 inch homage. They have history, they have a storyline now, right? Now, keep in mind, in December, we saw, no, excuse me, November 25th, we saw David Benavidez take on Demetrius Andrade, and on the undercard, you had David Benavidez's young older brother uh, take on Jamal Charlo as the co-main event. So you had Jamal Charlo versus Jose Benavidez, co-main event, David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade as the main event, right? So with that said, it looks like they, they're going to possibly head down that same path for April, okay? Which would see David Benavidez take on David Morrell in the main event and Jamal Charlo take on Caleb Plant in the co-main event, right? Two mega fights and then they'll fill in the rest of the card. This sells the pay-per-view card. This pays the bills for... Uh, um the PBC to be able to pay these purses to high profile fights because they're gonna rely on the pay-per-view mo model, right? The back end model. So you'll get them have guaranteed purses from uh, uh, the PBC. But again, if Amazon is not giving them a budget, it's, the model is completely different than what you had from uh, uh, Showtime because Showtime had a budget that they invested and gave to Al Heyman and the PBC and Al Heyman divvied up that that uh, budget to the fighters, their guaranteed purses, and then they still put them on pay-per-view and they got the, 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 the lion's share of their money, their purses from the pay-per-view back end. Well, if, P if Amazon is not giving them uh, a guaranteed purse up front, a budget to deal with and just giving them a platform to deal with, then it's, the model is going to be completely different. So you put on a fight like this, uh, a fight card like this, and then use fillers at the bottom, right? Uh, to fill in the bottom. And it's top heavy, the card. You pay Jamal Charlo, you pay Kayla Plant, you pay David Benavidez and David Morrell. David Morrell is not going to garner a massive purse. David Benavidez is going to get the biggest purse on the card. I believe Jamal Charlo will get the second biggest purse. Then Caleb Plant will get the third biggest purse, and then David Morrell will get the fourth biggest purse, and then you use fillers to fill in the rest of the card to make it a complete card from top to bottom. Now, this is a Las Vegas card uh, that you put this on, uh, a big card, and it sells. It's entertaining. So I'm being told that this is a possibility. Hopefully it comes to fruition for April. They're looking to have Javante Tank Davis uh, showcase his fight and his talents in uh, 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 March, right? And Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, they don't want to step on toes. You know you in May, you're going to have a pay-per-view event in May. You can't have two pay-per-view events in one month, okay? So they're looking to do this card in May, but it can be moved to, I mean, in April, but it could be moved to June if you have uh, uh, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford in April, Geronte Tank Davis in March, and Canelo in May. That's three back to back. And then June, you'll get this card. But it looks like this is going to have to be the model if Amazon 
is not having a purse to a budget to give them financially. This would be huge. Uh, again, the selling of this, David Morrell, David Benavidez is gonna sell a card and these are quality, quality uh, uh, fights, okay? These are not, you know, um, mismatches. These are not one-sided fights. These are quality fights. These are two 50-50 fights. Two truly 50-50 fights. Now, David Benavidez is gonna be the favorite. Jamal Charles is gonna be the favorite. At the end of the day, has David uh, ben David Morrell been in a fight that he can muster up the the the, the talent? Is his talent going to over overshadow and overtake David Benavidez's experience? Because David Benavidez has been in there with Anthony Durrell. He's been in there now with Demetrius Andre. He's been in there with uh, Caleb Plant. He's been in there with master class boxers. Demetrius Andre is a southpaw that has power as well. So David Benavidez has seen a David Morrell. Now, not in an actual physical physical form because David Morrell is six foot one with a 70, almost a 79 inch arm reach. Demetrius Andre is six feet tall with a 74 inch arm reach, right? David Morrell is younger than Demetrius Andre who's 35. He's 10 years younger, okay? And he's more vibrant. His legs are much more livelier. Uh, his faster hands, and he's a bigger guy than Demetrius Andre and Caleb Plant. And Caleb Plant faded in the second half of the fight. Now, when it so I will have to favor David Benavidez. But again, what David Morrell brings to the table is going to be difficult to deal with. And then you look at uh, 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 Caleb Plant and Jamal Charlo. Now, when you look at Caleb Plant and Jamal Charlo. Uh, Jamal Charlo has had now one fight in two and a half years, which was his last fight against Jose Benavidez Jr. Okay. Uh, prior to that, he fought June of 2019. Uh, excuse me, June of 2021. He was out the ring that long, right? But he looked sharp. He looked accurate. He looked strong. He looked like the real deal. He looked like he didn't lose a beat. Now, was it the perfect matchup stylistically to, to for him to have a showcase talent? Yeah. And now you put Caleb Plant in there, who has his biggest issue. He's a slick boxer. He's uh, uh, athletic, high ring IQ. The issue that Caleb Plant has is what? Uh, Caleb Plant fades in the second half of fights. So it's not like you can say, well, David, ben, uh, David, um, Jamal Charlo has been inactive going into a fight with Caleb Plant. Well, Caleb Plant is active and he still fades in the second half of fights. Period. And he only had one fight since getting knocked out by uh, Canelo. No, he had, no, excuse me. He has a few fights, but he was knocked out by Canelo Alvarez. He only had one fight in 2023, which was David Benavidez fight in March. So he's not the most active guy. And again, like I said, in the second half of fights, he fades. He was out boxing David Benavidez. What did he do in the second half of the fight? In the fight, he faded. Uh, uh, he was, you know, uh, out boxing Jose Uskotsky, the biggest win in his career. And he dropped him twice. But what did he do in the second half of that fight? He started to fade. So Jamal Charlo is fundamentally sound. He's big, he's strong, he's athletic, and he has power, right? So Jamal Charlo, uh, and he puts pressure on you, and he's fundamentally sound, defensively sharp. So that's an interesting fight. Truly 50-50 fights. I favor Jamal Charlo to win second half of the fight. I think Caleb Plant slows down. I think Jamal Charlo pressure, combination punches, and body work can start to take a toll. And I think Jamal Charlo wins a decision. When it comes to David Benavidez and David Morrell, that's a whole nother story. But can David Morrell be able to weather the pressure, the consistency, the durability, the high work rate of David Benavidez? Or will David Morrell's skill set, uh, ability to uh, um, box angles and athletic ability in his southpaw stands with his power be too much for David Benavidez? Overcome David Benavidez. Interesting card. So hopefully it comes to fruition. But it would be arguably the biggest fight card 
in 2024. I don't think that you can make another card that gonna put on this type of quality two fights in one night. I just don't think so. So let's see how it unfolds and plays out. But uh, that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notification. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. It's all I got for y'all. I'm gone. Peace.